Good rising, brethren. This is Big Judah coming to you guys in California. Before I begin, give all praise to the Most High Yahweh. Acknowledgement to the earthly mother. Who is wisdom? Who is the Holy Spirit? Acknowledge Yahweh Shai. I pray the Most High blesses this lesson this evening, gives more knowledge and understanding of the events of the past in order to understand events that are currently happening on the earth. So we get a much better understanding of the things that are soon to come on the earth. We're going to be getting into some history, which as you can see, this history is um, doing so much damage that the uh, nations are trying to um, take away our focus on looking at our history and getting more understanding of the things that were done to us. So they're trying to uh, elevate events that are happening supposedly today. These events are all about keeping us from finding out information and understanding about our people, about our history, about our plight. As we get deeper and deeper into rediscovering our heritage, they are coming up with staging bigger and bigger events. But as you can see, it's like they're all just kind of playing their roles, but nothing dramatic is really happening. And I mean, uh, as you can tell, like the, the things that they are trying to do pretty much go through throughout all of society. You know, you got your news agencies that are, you know, going with these stories, uh, bringing out this information, uh, s talking about, you know, financial problems, military problems, political issues, just anything to float your boat to keep you from looking at the true awakening and the true rise of the most highest chosen people. They're also trying to keep you away from the fact that many uh, of the other nations are beginning to cleave and look at the um, information that the Most High is sending out. It's not just us that's, aw that are, that's awakening, but it's also people that are, have been chosen to cleave to the Israelites and cleave to our power. Now, I want to look at this magazine that just came out. You know, every year it seems like these guys come up with these National Geographics and then, you know, they just kind of rehash a lot of the same information over and over again. They just put a new cover on the magazine and then, but they rehash all the same information. And it's in order for them to still be able to try to interject themselves into our history. They're still trying their best every single year to reinforce the fact that they are the Israelites. They are the ones who have a, a, the, the grasp of history. They're the ones that understand everything and that, you know, us so-called brown and black and brown people, uh, you know, we're just kind of like just people on the sidelines, don't really know much of anything, and that we are just pretty much uh, here to follow their lead. You can still see the white supremacy. You can still see the whole doctrine of discovery. You can still see the, you know, the, the Catholic church and the Christian churches, um, motto about how they are the ones that, you know, dictate everything to the world. And we are just here to accept whatever it is that they say. And uh, the picture here just pretty much reinforces that. The Israelites were so-called white people. Romans, all so-called white people. Anyone has to do, you know, anyone in the Bible, so-called white people, you know, now they're upset because the Egyptians portrayed Cleopatra as a so-called woman of color. They're pissed off about that. The Egyptians are pissed off at uh, comedians because they say that the Egyptians were black. See, we don't, we don't have, according to everyone else, we have no history. You know, I went to a powwow, Indian powwow this weekend. And uh, just checking it out and things like that. And it's like, even like the natives, they all seem to have to look a certain way. That there is no so-called black Native Americans. 
But this has all been reinforced by history books through the education system from the time that we are in kindergarten all the way through college. They, when they talk about Native Americans, they always show a particular looking individual. They have to have a certain look. And those, all those people, you know, are the Native Americans. We are only Africans. That's all that we are. We have no history. But you're going to see that this has been perpetuated by the Jesuits. And this has been going on for a very long time. See, we think of the Jesuits as just, you know, a group that's only been, as it has been in the churches. But they've had their tentacles in all facets of life. But that goes back to the Catholic Church. That goes back to the Hydra, okay? In the, in the uh, constellations, goes back to the serpent that has a grip on the entire world. Now check this part out real quick about the Jesuits, okay? The Jesuits, known as soldiers of Christ, saw themselves as elite fighters on the front lines of the counter-reformation. They quickly identified education as a key opportunity to raise new generations beholden to Catholic doctrine. Now see, it, it wasn't just the churches that were pushing Catholic doctrine. They've also infiltrated the education system that's pushing the Catholic doctrine. So remember, they were talking about here in, in the United States, it's a separation of church and state. But ultimately, the churches have you know, are, are intermingled with the state. They work together to push an agenda. And this is something that's been going on worldwide. Okay, so again, they quickly identified education as a key opportunity to raise new generations beholden to Catholic doctrine. Now remember, what did they do when they first got here? Supposedly, they burned all of the... Um, writings of the Aztecs, of the Mayans, of any of the uh, so-called uh, native people. They burned supposedly all of their writings, correct? But then as soon as they were done burning all their writings, all of a sudden then they had a lust to learn about the Native Americans. So therefore they wanted to go back and start to study of uh, the people that were here at first, but they couldn't find the writings. So they had to kind of talk to people that were here and, and and then they would write things down supposedly and then um they would teach you know about other people's history now wouldn't it make sense that they would just keep a lot of that information because it, it was way more advanced than anything that they had from you know from the europeans we were the, the people that were here were way more advanced so it would make more sense that you yeah they would say they burnt all the information but they didn't they kept it for themselves then they said they burned everything, but then all they did was just get the information that they got from us in the first place and then raise themselves up, made it seem like they can't put all this stuff. That's more like it. That's even biblical because it talks about how they're not going to have any understanding. How the Most High is going to use like a, a base people to take us down. If this is a base people that was being used to take us down, then they would not have had all this information in the first place. They had to have got it from somewhere, and they got it from us. So again, they quickly identified education as a key opportunity to raise new generations beholden to Catholic doctrine. But their curriculum was not limited to religious indoctrination. See, they're always talking about religious you know, indoctrination, you know, but it's way more than that. Many Jesuit schools excelled in such Renaissance subjects as classical literature. See, they're the ones that got to dictate what is classical. What are you going to be taught in schools? What um, information is uh, appropriate for these children? That's coming from the Jesuits. That's coming from the Catholic Church. Philosophy, rhetoric, science, and the arts. So as you can see, they're the ones that have come up with your history. They're the ones that come up with philosophy. 
right? They're the ones that supposed to come up with science and the arts. So the Jesuit, you know, tentacles and, and their, the touch that they have and the influence they have is not just about religion. It expands to so many different um, avenues, so many different parts of our society. It says, by the mid-17th century, Jesuits ran more than 500 schools and universities across Europe and in overseas territories. So in Europe, they're promoting their breakdowns. They're promoting their history. And in their conquered territories, over here in the Americas, they're doing the same thing. That's why everyone is going to be so confused when the Most High comes back and starts bringing back more knowledge and understanding. Because everything that they've been taught comes from the Catholic Church. It's not just religion. It's also, you know, your history. Who the Catholic Church says is who. You know, they're the ones who are promoting this group of people as being the Native Americans. It's promoted in their artwork. In this magazine, I'll bring, um, doing a couple more videos on it. It shows you pictures of who they say the natives are. Then later on, they just prop up a person named Jesse Jackson to come up with the whole term of African American in the 1980s. See, forever they've changed you know, our identity from Negroes to colored to Afro Americans, you know, to this to that because they've been trying to hide our identity the whole time. It's easy to see the Olmec heads and see that those were the original people that were here. And that's what the original people look like. So-called black people with braids and everything else. Then you even look at the walls and the pyramids here in the Americas and it depicts people that look just like us. Now, if on the walls of these pyramids here in the Americas, you have so-called black people, but you also have brown people, you have a mix of different people that are actually depicted on the walls in the pyramids here in the Americas. But when I go to an Indian, when I go to a powwow, they all look the same. So you're trying to say like, so... When, before the Spaniards got here, before the Jesuit influence, before the Catholic influence, they depicted themselves and they show themselves as a mix of people. But today, that mix is not evident. When you look, when you go to these Indian, these powwows and you, and you look at, you know, who they say are the original people from these lands. Because everything is an agenda. And the whole agenda has been to obliterate the memory of true Israel from the earth. And the people who are responsible for doing that are the churches. The churches are responsible for obliterating the memory of the Israelites from the earth. Just like it talks about in um, Psalms 83. You know, they were going to obliterate us. They were going to make it seem as, you know, they're going to, the land of Israel, the people of Israel were no more. And that's exactly what they've done. And now you see how they've done it right here. You know, you see how they've done it right here. This is, this is showing you exactly how they did it. They set up the schools. They tell you who's who. Let's take a look real quick at Psalms 83. We'll start at two. For lo, thine enemies make a tumult, and they that hate thee have lifted up the head. They are have all made this agreement right here, and you see it right here. Okay? They have taken crafty counsel against thy people and consulted against thy hidden ones. We are the hidden ones. So again, they have taken crafty counsel against thy people and consulted against thy hidden ones. What was that crafty counsel? Right here. It says you can see it. They quickly identified education as a key opportunity to raise new generations beholden to Catholic doctrine. They don't want you to realize the truth. They want you to realize that, you know, they want you to believe that the Catholic doctrine is the only truth that you need. 
It says, but their curriculum was not limited to religious indoctrination. But many Jesuit schools excelled in such Renaissance subjects as classical literature, philosophy, rhetoric, science, and the arts. By the mid-17th century, the 1600s, right, Jesuits ran more than 500 schools and universities across Europe and in overseas territories. That right there is your crafty council. The vast majority of the world has no idea that the Jesuits were the ones or are the ones still today who make up your curriculum in schools, in colleges. They didn't just lose their influence. They still control all of that. Which goes back again to Psalms 83. They have taken crafty counsel against thy people and consulted against thy hidden ones. They have said, come and let us cut them off from being a nation. How do they cut us off? by setting up their own nations of people. This is, you're, a, you're a British, you're Irish, right? You're German, you're the Native Americans, you're the Indians. That's what they've done through education, their education. So again, they have said, come and let us cut them off from being a nation, that the name of Israel may be no more in remembrance. How would they do that? They could do that just with uh, the, the churches alone because our people were not just like a, a religious people. We were in mathematics. We were in sciences. We are in the arts. We are in philosophy. All the things that they set up their education you know, system to start to teach were things that our people dominated. So not only did we have the religious authority that the Most High had given us as a people, but he gave us knowledge and understanding of all different subjects. So when the Catholics came into power, it wasn't just um, that they came into power uh, for, um, for religion. They had to obliterate us from all aspects of society. They had to obliterate us from all different areas because our people dominated everything. We dominated science. We dominated math. We dominated philosophy because we, and with the philosophy, we would be into the esoteric understanding of, of, of things. There's your philosophy right there. The deeper meanings, the deeper understandings. There's your philosophy. There's your great thinkers. Our people were the ones that were making connections with the Zodiacs, with the Decons, and with the events that were happening down here. The Most High gave that information and understanding to us. He gave us the mathematics and the sciences. How do we know that? Because of the things that we built. And there's still a testament today to our greatness as a people. Because the people who took us down still cannot um, replicate the things that our people built before they came on the scene. That's why they're always constantly, well, there's this, you know, there's this, but we didn't realize, um, we don't know how, how they built it. We don't really know how to use it because it was never given to them in the first place. So in order to obliterate us from remembrance, just like I said here in uh, Psalms 83, uh, verse four, they have said, come and let us cut them off from being a nation that the name of Israel may be no more in remembrance. For they have consulted together with one consent. They are confederate against thee. They are all confederate against us. And this is a prime example of how they've done it. They have taught all these lies, but none of them stand up and say, you know what, this is wrong. These are the true people. This is where we get this information from. They still are pushing his story. They're still presenting his story and acting as if it is a fact. But the Most High is exposing them every day. And as they get exposed, then they have to come up with bigger and, and, you know, and more extravagant stories in order to keep the world's attention away from this truth and them trying to, uh, you know, control the masses with you know, games and fun things and things like that. See, before, you know, 
what would the uh, Romans do? They would have their games and they would have their gladiator games and they would have all that, you know, they would have all these things to keep the people away from uh, realizing what's really going on. Keep their attention, you know, focused on games and things like that, just like they do today. There's no, as you know, it's, it's no, there's nothing new. Everything around them has fallen apart. So what do they do? You know, hey, push these playoffs, you know, Gotta have all. Gotta have the NBA playoffs. Okay, we got baseball going on. We got, you know, hockey going on. You know, we got all these different things going on right now. Got these, you know, these stories of going on with war with Ukraine and Russia and all these different things and the BRICS nations and banks failing and money getting ready to, you know, is is falling apart and you know the American dollar is losing its, uh, losing its uh, buying power and, and they're losing every all you know everything. But says all these things were written in Scripture. They don't want people to realize the fact that all these things are written in Scripture. They don't want people to realize how big uh, of a of a con- of control, how long and wide these tentacles of the Catholic Church reach, and how they have been, you know, used by the Most High to obliterate the memory of true Israel from the earth. But he's given us back our knowledge and understanding. And it's it's growing day by day. And there's more information coming out every single day. But this is huge right here because, like I said, this is Psalms 83. And it shows you that, you know, these educational uh, places they set up, these universities, these schools, the curriculums, all come from the Catholic Church, all come from the Jesuits. Someone has to approve these curriculums. And who are the people that approve these curriculums? You know, they're just people that are behind closed doors. They're the ones that come together and they're all working together to keep the knowledge of true Israel from the world. And it would make sense that they would get into um, the education system. That's why so many people have such a hard time believing the truth because, you know, the brainwashing was not just the Catholic Church. The brainwashing is also pervasive in schooling from a young age. It's pervasive in um, television and what they see, how we as a people are portrayed on television. My wife was talking to me and she was talking about a, it's a sane in Spanish, I don't, I can't really say it because I, I don't know it, but what it breaks down to are people, my Spanish speaking people will know what it is. But it's kind of like when you make up, it was kind of like when certain people overthink things or they're scared of things that aren't really a threat. And um, I'll try to look it up really fast um, so I can see if I can find it here. But it's about a more. And like a sickle. Hold on real fast. Let me see if I can look it up here. I'm trying to, I'm looking up really fast. Um, I was not giving it to you right now, but you know what? Okay, but what it breaks down to is like um, they're always seeing like a moor with a sickle or moor with a, a knife, but it's not really a threat. So they're like they're they're seeing things that are threats that really aren't threats. Okay, but it's just weird. Well, it's not if you have understanding. But it's like you know they're seeing th- if you see certain things and you think it's a threat, but it's really not a threat to you. And it's a it's a it's a saying in Spanish. It pretty much talks about a moor and a sickle. So if you guys know the same, maybe you can type it into the um, comment section. But it's just funny that they would actually talk about a moor and a sickle and not being a threat. Because we know in history that the Moors controlled the area, the land of Spain for hundreds of years. They controlled, you know, the life, you know, the lifestyle. They controlled, you know, 
everything. They controlled the education system. They controlled Islam, uh, was controlling the religious system of, of, of these lands for a very long time before the Spanish got control and destroyed. Well, I think Granada was the last city they took over in 1492 in January or whatever else, of 1492. Then all of a sudden, the age of discovery happened and they came over here. Um, but they tried to portray the Moors as not being a, um, a threat. And it was a saying or an idiom that's in, that's in Spanish talking about that. But what's crazy is that, that they would use that because they, they were trying their best to hide the fact that the Moors, uh, or so-called black people, had control over Spain for such a long time. And that's such a positive, strong influence of in all the different uh, aspects of life, of I'm sure in the arts, in architecture, in science, you know, the Moors had all this knowledge, understanding. They had libraries. They had all this, you know, these books. They had all this information. They looked at the zodiacs. They they were just able to, you know, they came up with the astrolabe. They were able to do all these different things. Okay, but when the Spanish took over, they even made idioms that would um, diminish the um the threat or the power of the moors so people would hear these idioms and then they would just you know it would just be th do things in your mind just to diminish the the power of so-called black people because like i said they've they've gone into this is this is the whole thing with the the thing that they've done to our minds you know the the mind, you know, sweeping that they've done over society is that they've raised themselves up to be in these high positions of moral character, moral authority. They were, they portrayed themselves as physically stronger than everyone else. And, you know, they were able to do all these things, but they've hidden their true history. They've hidden the fact of who this information was given to first, who had it first, who the most high ordained should have it. Who the Most High has ordained as the people that will spread this truth to the world. But now the Most High is raising up his people and they're bringing out truth that cannot be denied. Only thing they can do right now is try to ignore it and try to do all the same things that they've done before. But this time it won't work because our time of cursing is over. So that's why this is really important. It's just, just this little part right here. There's so much information in it. Again, I'm going to read it one more time. The Jesuits, known as soldiers of Christ, saw themselves as elite fighters on the front lines of the counter-reformation. They quickly identified education as a key opportunity to raise new generations beholden to Catholic doctrine. But their curriculum was not limited to religious indoctrination. Many Jesuit schools excelled in such Renaissance subjects as classical literature, philosophy, rhetoric, science, and the arts. By the mid 17th century, Jesuits ran more than 500 schools and universities across Europe and in overseas territories. And it's the so-called Christians today will act like they don't, they're not Catholics. You see, it's just a, it's a fake fight. They are both working together to destroy the true name of Israel. They make it seem as if they're enemies, but they're actually, you know, partners in destroying Israel. Because these so-called Christians love their, you know, their their football teams. They love their colleges. You know, they all talk about, you know, their, you know, the Bible Belt and everything else. But they're all going and eating pork and shrimp and having barbecues on Saturdays, going to all their cookouts and, uh, you know, their tailgates at these games at these uh, educational um, institutions, and they're all pushing, these educational um, institutions are all pushing Catholic Jesuit doctrine. So just because you go to church on Sunday and you, you talk about the doctrinal differences doesn't mean anything when you go to the, the um, colleges and they're still pushing the same Catholic doctrines in all these colleges as well. That's why they all follow the same curriculum because it comes from the same people. So they can fake it like they're fighting each other and that they, you know, Catholics and Christians have a problem, they have a beef, whatever else. They don't. They have to make it seem like it, you know, like there's an issue, so that it keeps the masses, you know, thinking that they're, oh, well, I'm a, 
I'm a Catholic, so I'm, I'm better than you. Or I'm a Christian, so I'm better than you. But I'm a Jehovah's Witness, but I'm, so I'm better than you. But they all go to the same schools. They all are taught the same curriculum. They're all taught that African Americans are this. Spanish are that. The Native Americans look like this. Uh, Christopher Columbus discovered America. They're all pushing the same doctrine. But see, the Most High is at work. So there's a great comment that goes along with this. I, you know, Most High put all this together right now. Talking about the raven or corvus is a sign in the stars. Okay? And Latani Williams says, I swear every time Big Judah comes out with some information, something happens that goes along with the info. Has anyone seen the recent videos of the black birds attacking Ish's flags? I don't believe in coincidences. The Most High send in signs everywhere. All praises to the Most High. I, don't, I do not believe in coincidence, uh, coincidences either. You know, I heard about that story a couple of days ago. So I went and checked it out. You can see it. The black bird attacking and taking down Ish's flag for everyone to see. Because there's been so many lies that have been perpetrated. And now the Most High is exposing these lies. And here's the story. If you want to go, go and look it up, you can look it up. Crow and a cat take down Israeli occupation flag. But the bird, black bird comes in representing Corvus, the raven, just like in the stars, you know, coming in and taking down the hydra, taking down the serpent, how it's written in the stars. So it's just, just, just a representation of what is happening in the spirit world is also happening. Now it's starting to, you know, it's, it's happening here in the physical plane. And it's a beautiful thing to watch how the Most High works and how he um, justifies or, you know, gives credence to this new information and the timing of everything. It's all in the Most High's timing. And he's bringing out truth and understanding. So, you know, we bring out the video, we bring out the information, and then afterwards, the Most High sends the bird and, you know, it's caught on camera. So it's just, you know, just giving more credence to this information that the Most High is bringing out. The vast majority of the world is just going to think it's just a bird. It's just, yeah, it's just a coincidence. No big deal. It doesn't mean anything. But we know to look for these types of things because this is the Most High speaking to us. This is the Most High showing us that the information that He is giving us is valid and it has true legs to run and it, the other nations will not be able to gainsay or bring it down. The Most High brings out other information, and all that's why that's why we can go. We're not stuck with just talking about the Bible. Our truth is in all aspects of life. Our truth is in science. Our truth is in math. Our truth is in the arts. You know all the different things that they've set up, the education system, all the things that they've set up. You know. Now the Most High has shown you that we were everywhere and our, you know, our fingerprints is on everything. That's why they've been trying to get us to just concentrate on just the Bible and that's it. And only the books that we've approved for you and that's it. But we were in control of everything. And the Most High will raise up his people once again and they will control everything once again. Because that's what the Most High said is going to happen. And that's how this is going to go down. All praise is the Most High, Yahweh. Acknowledgement to the earthly mother. Who was wisdom? Who was the Holy Spirit? Acknowledgement to Yahweh Shai. Shalom. 